Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about the newest release of Microsoft Autogen, which is version 0.4. Using this tool, you can build AI agents as well as the multi-agent applications very easily. So let's dive into what's new in version 0.4. Basically, Microsoft has upgraded from version 0.2 to 0.4, and there were some limitations in the version 0.2, like the architectural constraint. 0.2 version wasn't flexible enough to handle the complex task. In version 0.2, APIs were a bit hard to use and there were limited support for debugging. All of this is taken care in version 0.4 and apart from this, a very useful feature is added here, which is asynchronous agents, which means if you have multiple agents to create and they don't have dependency on each other, then you can run them parallelly instead of in the sequence where they have to wait for one agent to finish and then the next will start. So this will reduce the runtime of the multi-agent application. On your screen, you can see the architecture of Autogen 0.4. So it's divided into three parts, framework, developer tools, and apps. So if we'll talk about the framework, there are three layers. So it's a layered structure now. The core API, it's the foundation, which ensures that everything runs smoothly and efficiently. And above the core layer is an agent chat layer. And this is the layer where the agents communicate with each other. And finally, the extension layer, using which you can add the extra features or you can customize your framework based on your needs. For example, if you want to integrate Autogen with the Azure AI agent service, then you can easily do it using the extensions. Now, if I talk about the developer tools, there are two tools which are available. Autogen Studio, which is low code or no code option. It provides a user interface using which you can manage your agents very easily. Another option is the Autogen Bench, and it's a tool for testing and optimizing your AI agents. Now the third one is the apps. So it's integrated with the magnetic apps as well as you can, you can create your own app or you can integrate the Autogen with your own apps itself. So now if I'll talk about the components of Autogen 0.4. So the first one is the tools. So tool is a specific action which is defined. For example, a web search or the file search, all this is taken care by the tools. And these tools are used by the agents. Agents can also be called as the assistants, which will perform the task using the tools. Then comes the messages. So when the agents communicate with each other, they use messages. So they provide all the details in the messages and the other agent will use those messages and then provide its own response. Another component is teams, which is like a group chat where the agents will communicate with each other using the messages. But for how long should the agents communicate with each other? And that is the reason termination is defined. Using the termination, you can define how many times they can communicate with each other, for how long they can. And there are different termination options which are available and you can use it in your code. And based on that, the termination will happen. And finally, the selector group chat. It's a multi-agent group chat where one agent will decide which agent has to perform the task and then delegate the task to another agent. I completely understand it's a lot of information and it becomes overwhelming. So the best way to learn something is learn by doing. So that's the reason I have included a mini project where I'll provide the code and show how these agents communicate with each other and how the Autogen agent chat works. So this mini project, we are going to implement it two different ways. First one is using the multi-agent team. Another one is the selector group chat. So if I'll talk about the multi-agent team, First, the user input will be provided. What type of kid story do they want? Then this input will go to story writer agent. So the story writer agent will write the story. And once the story writer agent provides the story in the messages, that message will go to story reviewer agent. Story reviewer agent will review that story and provide a constructive feedback or a feedback or how the system message of the agent is defined. So once the feedback is provided, the message will send back to the story writer and story writer will write the story based on the feedback. And finally, because we have provided the termination, which is text termination. So, so story reviewer will approve the story. And then finally the chat will end and we'll get a response. So that means in this case, user interaction is only once for providing the inputs. And then the agents will communicate with each other till you get a perfect response. So first agent will complete its task, then it will send the message to another agent, then the another agent will work on it. And so in a round robin way, these agents will communicate with each other. 
in this example, I have taken only two agents, but you can take multiple agents here. Now the another way is select a group chat. In this case, similar way, the user input will be provided where user will provide the input, which specific story do they want. Then the four agents will be defined in the selector group chat. One will be the planning agent, which will be the selector of course. Then the three different agents. One is story writer, which will write the story, story reviewer, which will review and story moral, which will add the moral to the story. And in this case, there is no round robin. All the selection will be done by the planning agent. So the planning agent will decide which agent should work on which part. So we have to describe the role of each agent in the system message. And based on that, the planning agent will select which task will be assigned to which agent. So the story writer will write it, story review will review. And once the story is finalized, then the moral has to be added and the agent will add the moral. And then finally, the planning agent will provide the summary, what story has been created, and you will get a response from the planning agent. Let's implement both of these methods in the lab. I'm logged in Azure portal now, and let's start with the creation of Azure OpenAI service, and then we'll create a GPT model using Azure AI Foundry. And once that model is deployed, we'll use that model as a tool into our agents. So let's go to Azure OpenAI. Create. So let's create a new resource group, RG Hub. I'll use East US2. Shalender Open AI 01. Hopefully it's available. Perfect. Next. So I'm not providing any network security. It will be open to the networks. No tags and just create it. Validation is successful and I'll just create it now. The deployment has started and I'll pause the video and we'll be back once the deployment is successful. So OpenAI service is deployed now. Let's go to the resource. And now I'll go to Azure AI Foundry portal. So now on the left side, let's scroll down and go to the deployments and deploy a model. Let's deploy a base model. GPT-40, confirm. And I'll customize the number of the tokens here. Deploy. And perfect, our model is deployed now. Now the next thing what we have to do is go to the VS code and open the code. So first what we are doing here is importing all the packages. And for that we need to install few packages too, like Autogen Agent Chat, which is in the requirement. So Autogen Agent Chat, Autogen extension for Azure so that it can, can make the connection with the Azure, then python.environment so that all the environment variables can be loaded from .env file. And finally, the Azure identity for authorization with the Azure. Now, if I'll go back to my code, so we are loading the environment variables from .env. Right now, I haven't provided any, but I'll add soon. Then there is a token provider, which we are not using, but so you can get the bearer token from Azure directly for cognitive services. But in this case, I'm going to use the API key. So first I have to define the API key because this is what we are getting from the environment variables. So dot env API key and let's get the API key. Azure AI Foundry in our model via and copy the API key. So let's copy it here. That is done. Now because we have to make the connection with the Azure, so we need to do Azure OpenAI Chat Completion Client and we need to provide this information. Azure Deployment, this is the name of the model which we are deploying. So either I can provide it directly here. So let's provide the model name. Let's go to environment variable, model name. It's GPT-40. 
So let's copy it here and model underscore name and we'll get the environment variables and instead of the API key it will be model name so here we have to define model name now for the api version let's check the api version so let's api hyphen version so let's go back to azure ai foundry copy this and quickly get it from here so api version is 2024-0801 preview so let's copy it here and api underscore version and then we'll get those environment variables api version and let's define it here api version and finally the azure endpoint and the azure endpoint is updated here so now we have provided all the values to make a connection with the azure that's all good now the another step is to define the different agents first we are creating a story writer agent which will write the story and it's using the model client instead of the tool it's using our gpt model so it's using az model client which we have defined here and then in the system message i have provided the urn helpful ai assistant which writes story for the kids and keep the story short same way for the critic agent which is story reviewer it uses the same model and you are a helpful ai assistant that provides constructive feedback on the kid's story to add a positive impactful ending and finally it has to approve when the feedbacks are addressed so these are the two agents and then we have defined the text termination where how the termination will happen it's based on the approve text which will come from the story reviewer if the story review will say that it can be approved then it will be approved and and finally the chat will close and all the communication will close and you will get the final response and in the team you have to define the round robin group chat where there is story writer story reviewer and the termination condition and now i'm defining the asynchronous function so that they can run asynchronously but here there is a dependency so they will run round robin way so write a story on elephant and then run the function so it's saved so first thing when we have to run a python code is to create a virtual environment so let's open the terminal it's a powershell terminal and python hyphen m virtual environment so this will create a virtual environment and once the virtual environment is created then we have to activate it so dot v e n v scripts activate so now the virtual environment will be activated it's activated here now we have to install all the required dependencies which are defined in requirements.txt so pip install hyphen r requirements.txt so this will install all the required packages here So all the packages are getting installed. Perfect. And the packages are installed now. So this means we are ready to run this code. So now our task is to write a story on elephant. You can change anything. Let's write, write it lion. So save it. Now let's run this code. Python teams.py. And first it will make a connection. So this is the user input, write a story on lion. And you can see the story writer has written a story, Leo the wise lion. Then the story reviewer 
provided the suggestions and then again story writer first appreciated the feedback and then provided the story and once all the feedback is taken into consideration then you can see the story reviewer approved it and once the approval is done then the communication has stopped so now there is a single prompt for the user and now the agents using the messages are communicating with each other and then finalizing a perfect story for the kids so that's good now there is another way let's check that way too reduce this go to selectors now this is selector.py which is select a group chat same way we are importing the packages here then loading the environment variables making the connection with azure we need to fix this let's copy this section from teams.py so we are using the same gpt model let's save it now we are defining the different agents so the first one is the planning agent and the planning agent is the first one to engage in this group chat so we have defined that you are the first one who will be engaged and in the system messages we have defined that you are a planning agent your job is to break down the complex task into smaller manageable subtasks we have defined the different team members like story writer story reviewer which will review and provide the constructive feedback and the story moral which will add the moral to the story and the planning agent will not write the story or implement the task by itself it will just delegate the task and then it will show which agent is working on which task and once everything is done then summarize and provide the findings using the terminate message so that the text termination here we have used is terminate so once the planning agent will say let's terminate then the communication between the agents will be terminated and you will get a response so same way we have defined story writer model client and the system message for the reviewer and for the moral text termination here is terminate and we have used another termination method here is max messages because now the power or the selection option is with the selector which is the planning agent and it can take multiple terms and it could go n number of times if it's not satisfied so in that case we have defined that after 10 messages it should terminate by itself so in the termination we are using both either the terminate messages there or the 10 rounds so now previously we defined the round robin chat so it's the selector group chat where we are defined all the agents and then which model we are using and then the termination and finally we are providing the task which is write a story on the rocket crash so rocket crash is something which is negative with so by default a story generated will be a negative story but now the planning agent has to take care that it has to be positive story with a moral in it and it should be specific for the kids so let's run it so now let's run this selector.py file python selector.py first the user message was write a story on the rocket crash ignore this message because i was working on something and then there is a mismatch in the gpt model but you can just ignore it so the planning agent is telling the story writer that write a story so story writer has written a story on the rocket crash so then the reviewer is reviewing and providing the suggestions and then the story writer is writing the story again then the story moral is adding the moral to the story and finally the planning agent is provided the process is complete this is the final story and these are the steps which are taken first writer then reviewer then writer then moral perfect so this is the final story the rocket that dream and the final moral so now the different agents communicated with each other and the planning agent acted as a selector which decided whose turn is it to perform the task so that's how using the autogen you can divide your task into multiple subtasks and then the different agents will have the different task assigned and they will communicate with each other till a perfect response is provided so that is all i wanted to show about the autogen in this video i hope you liked it please like and subscribe thank you so much